the ANAVQ 23 Pave Spike, a mid 70s television targeting pod with laser and four times optical zoom for deploying laser guided bombs accurately onto targets. However, being a television set, operation at night and in poor conditions is very difficult to impossible. Mounted only on station 4, it comes in two flavours, standard and the smart fast track upgrade. The latter being capable of slewing four times faster and with an improved laser ranging logic. You'll only want to use the standard for the extra challenge or due to inventory limitations. Let's get set up. During startup, ensure you turn the pod on before taxi and takeoff. If the pod is not powered up, the gimbal will move freely and become damaged by maneuvers. Power the pod on from the Wizzo pedestal. You can hide the stick by clicking on its base if needed. Then hit the power on button. Optionally, you may follow the bit tests as detailed in the manual. Ensure this is left on bit 1 when you are done. Leaving it in other modes, such as bit 0, which test illuminates all the push buttons, can cause confusion and inhibit use. Load up with laser guided bombs, either GBU 10, 12 or 24. Whilst on the ground, set your laser guided bombs own code with the crew chief menu. With A, select crew chief, weapon settings, bomb laser code, and enter the code number with your keyboard, between 1111 and 1788. Note that you cannot make use of 0 or 9 in your codes in any position. You might wish to note the laser codes of your flight on the window via the grease pencil. Next, the Wizzo sets the laser code for a targeting pod. Front right side, we've our laser panel. Hit the button underneath each digit to increment it until it matches the code you selected for the bombs. And then press and hold the push button to confirm it. After a second, no go will switch off unless you have entered an invalid code. Alternatively, Jester can be commanded via the menu A to open, Air to ground, Pave spike, Laser code, and enter the code. Press Laser code again to set it. With that set, we're ready to fly. As we approach our target area, unstow the pod and enable the laser with the push buttons on the Wizzo's pedestal. This process takes about 5 seconds. Select TV mode from your display selector in either cockpit. If the video remains blank, make sure your Wizzo has toggled the video source to the ASQ153 on the video panel. Or ask Jester with the air to ground, TV video, pave spike. Select air to ground sight and depress the reticule 35 mils to help you cue the pod later. The pilot should then select direct for manual bomb drops or target find for laser computed dive toss using the pod. The wizard should confirm the WRCS out light is off. If it remains illuminated, the pilot has not selected a valid delivery mode. Leaving it like this will prevent the operation of memory mode and the WRCS features. You can also manually override the WRCS integration by pushing the button. In addition, you're going to see the INS integration to the right. Again, you can override this. Disabling INS features, which include the ground and roll stabilization, slant range computation, and the WRCS target integration. Functionally, with these disabled, you're operating entirely manually, tracking by hand, and you're back to the basics with bomb release tables. These are only used in an emergency, such as an INS failure or adverse weather conditions which are causing errors in the pod's altitude calculations, thus preventing accurate ground tracking. As we're operating with these on, we'll use the target find delivery mode. Double check the WRCS mode is selected on the pave spike range indicator in the pilot cockpit. The pave spike uses the dive toss mode algorithm, supplemented with laser range finding, with aircraft altitude and airspeed to compute and compensate for errors in release parameters. As such, we'll need to fill in the computer parameters, same as a dive toss release. First, we shall find the target area, ground level altitude. An inaccurate ground altitude setting will increase the rate the pod deviates from your target over time. You can find the ground altitude of your target by making use of the F10 map by placing your cursor onto the target area. Note the cursor coordinates and altitude displayed top left. Alternatively, you may already have this information on your mission briefing. 
Using laser guided bombs you only need to be roughly accurate with the numbers, as the guidance allows for correction. By default the drag coefficient is 1.02, which will be good enough for most circumstances. However if you want we can improve the accuracy a little by providing a calculated drag coefficient. This is also how we configure the ground altitude setting with Jester as wizard. We'll open the bombing table with right control B, select target find, GBU 12 or your bomb of choice, and enter the parameters for release that you plan on using, including the ground altitude from before. Then as pilot ask Jester to input it from the table directly, or you can input the numbers yourself as wizard. With the drag coefficient found here, and the target altitude here. This dial is set to 100 times the number entered, so an entry of 12 would be suitable for a target at 1200 feet above sea level. Meanwhile the pilot must select the stations, fusing and quantities of bombs to use. We're now set up to attack, but before we begin let's go over reading our display and the controls. Under the wizard display we have the contrast and brightness adjustments for the best picture, and the pilot has similar found left of their display. Back with the wizard, on the designator control panel below we have the reticle brightness which allows us to set black or green for best contrast. Within the display the reticle cross shows us where our laser is pointed, but will also show the targeting pod pitch. Looking level with the nose it will point upwards, whilst direct right indicates below our aircraft and pointing down is behind our aircraft. By the time it reaches the bottom at the 6 o'clock position our pod is reaching its gimbal limits and masking is imminent. But there is a major caveat. In order for the pod to look left or right it rolls and then pitches. This indicator only shows the pod's own pitch, now rotated 90 degrees to look left. So it's not a good measure of pitch from our aircraft unless you are flying directly at or away from the target. Roll indication is found in the pilot's cockpit to the right of our RWR the azimuth elevation indicator. Inside we see the roll limits of the gimbal. Within the green it's providing a reliable clear sightline. In addition three flags may show indicating the pod elevation from the aircraft. Green when the pod is within minus 120 to minus 155 degrees into yellow and then red at minus 160 degrees or greater by which point the pod is about to mask. It's up to the pilot to give the wizzo an unobstructed view of the target. Our own aircraft and stores may mask our vision, and for that the wizzo has a few brevity phrases. Blanking, to warn the pilot that stores like fuel tanks are masking the view. Ease off, to tell the pilot we're approaching the masking limits. And bunt, a direct command to rotate the aircraft to improve line of sight. Of course you can always use your own terms as you develop as a team with your wizzo and pilot. Back on the display, we can see the narrow field of view displayed as a circle on the screen. On the left side we have the time to go and release queue. These indicate track mode, laser status and release queuing. When both are absent it's indicating that we are not in a track mode. With both steady it indicates a track and that our laser is firing with a valid laser range solution. If the top time to go queue is flashing we have a track, the laser is firing but we do not have a valid range solution yet. Lastly, if they are both flashing, this is a caution that the pod's laser is not firing whilst in track mode. The pace bike's primary operational mode has the laser firing to range and designate constantly to provide the best tracking solution to our computer. The laser has a maximum range of roughly 11 nautical miles, which is indicated in the front cockpit on the range set displayed in hundreds of feet. As a rule of thumb, do not use the laser for longer than 15 minutes without allowing for cooling between uses. Limit continued slow and low level flight while operating the pod to 30 minutes. For extreme outside temperatures you'll have to adjust the limits accordingly. Alright, let's figure out the controls and how to cue our pod onto target. Only the WISO has control of the targeting pod. However, at early access release the pilot can use temporary binds to operate it from the front seat until gesture support is fully added. So the antenna hand control provides slew, whilst in track mode. When our control is centred the pod will remain ground stabilised in track mode. 
I'd advise that you add a small dead zone to ensure no accidental drifting and to make it easier to stay stabilised. The IFF challenge button toggles the field of view. The antenna trigger controls the mode and the laser. The command that activates is based on how far you pull the trigger and the context. Pulling first stage and releasing will toggle the pod between tracking and acquisition modes. Pulling to the second stage and releasing will toggle firing the laser. If you are not already in tracking mode, such as a memory or acquisition mode, a full press and release of the trigger will enter tracking mode and the laser will start firing, combining both stage functions at once instead. In addition, within the cockpit we have the reject override push button. You might need this if your barometric or ground altitude are set incorrectly, resulting in a rejected laser solution with failed ground stabilisation despite having laser range. Pressing will force laser ranging and provide ground track, however memory mode will not track properly still. We'll cover more on why this all happens in part 2. So at last, let's queue our pod onto a target and drop a bomb. The acquisition switch in the Wizzo pit provides us a few convenient methods. I'd highly recommend binding this switch to something easy to press. The top position is 12 fizz, which will likely be your primary method of finding targets. We'll make use of a target find delivery mode and 12 viz to hit our first target. 12 viz locks our pod forwards right about where our air to ground reticle is at 35 mils depression. Our pilot then simply flies the pipper onto the target area and then call out tracking to inform the wizard that the target is being held in sight. We'll switch back to track mode by pulling and releasing full action on the antenna and control. Note that the time to go and T0 cues will appear on the side. If the top line, time to go, is flashing, we are still beyond the maximum laser range. The wizard calls capture once they're on target with the pod stabilised in track mode. As we close, the time to go cue will become solid, indicating a good range. Call acceptance to inform the pilot that we have a good target solution. At this point, the pilot should hold the bomb release button down will hear a tone on the intercom. This starts the bombing solution calculations. The pilot must fly towards the target as directed by the HUD reticule roll indicators and the HSI heading, sent to the moon as accurately as possible. Keep an eye on the time to go queue, it will start advancing down at 15 seconds before release and automatically drop the bomb when it reaches the T0 release queue. Keep the pod on target with manual corrections as needed whilst the pilot still holds the bomb release. If you don't hold the bomb release, you won't get steering or time to go cues, nor will the bomb drop. And all that hard work finally pays off. The pod's limitations will often force you into acquiring and attacking within the same run. If you are too close when pressing the bomb release, you will find the bomb drops immediately so ensure you have the distance required to set everything up. This requires maintaining good spatial awareness of the target area, and using the pod more like a scope than a dedicated surveillance system. The second method we'll touch on is the 9-vis. This allows you to pick up a target off our left wing, having the pod aligned directly at our 9 o'clock, rather than 12 of the previous method. You might consider using this method whilst orbiting, but the angle required to put the wing on target is excessive. Instead, aim to fly past the target a couple miles away, bringing it into the field of view of the pod. Coordinate with your wizard, who should be looking out the window too to help orientate themselves as you approach the lock-on point. From here we can roll into an attack. Be careful to avoid masking the pod as we run in by referencing the video display and roll indicators. But should this happen, this is where the WRCS and memory mode comes into play. Whenever your targeting pod is masked by gimbal limits in a tracking mode, it will automatically store the last position into memory. You'll see the two lines disappear when this happens, indicating a loss of tracking. The pod will attempt to return to its last point automatically for you, but will drift over time. Once you've reacquired, press full action to restore laser and ground track, and then slew to correct. Do not rely on its accuracy to be very good for very long, particularly if you need to make sustained manoeuvres or to return to the target area later. Memory mode is not designed for long-term target storage, nor is it particularly accurate. The pod is designed for finding a target and engaging in the same pass, 
maintaining visual with your own eyes. Not from a loitering orbit from which you slowly pick up and choose your targets like you might with other pods in DCS. And that's the gist of the primary uses of the targeting pod and how to drop laser guided bombs. You could also use dumb bombs if you wish to. Whilst referred to as track mode, the pod can only ground stabilise. Moving objects will have to be tracked manually by the Wizzo. It also lacks any capacity to be queued onto a waypoint. Every time you manoeuvre the aircraft, you're going to throw the pod off. So keep things smooth and communicate with your Wizzo. Next time we'll talk about how to get the most out of our Pave Spikes limitations with best practices and tips. Hope you've enjoyed, and take care.